Hi guys. I'm sitting here working tonight, so I figured I would show you how to make these really pretty um, wafer paper sunflowers. They go together really, really fast, and, and they're a great fall flower to add. Um, first, what we're going to do is we're going to need three of the large daisies, two of the small size, and we're going to need our gum paste center. I'm going to show you how to make this really fast. Okay, first what we're going to do is get a small, just a small piece of gum paste. You can use fondant that has some Tylose powder in it. I'm going to roll it into a ball, however big you want your, your center to be. It's about mm, a little over an inch. It's not super huge. Then we're going to get a piece of 20 gauge wire and bend it and make a little hook, squish the hook together, and then push it into an L. The reason I do this is because this gives a little bit more surface area for that gum paste to hold on to so it won't fall off as easily. And then what I'm going to do is use my, my handy water brush and kind of wet my wire down so that way it will stick to the gum paste. And then we're just going to insert this into the center, find the center, and it doesn't have to be exact. And push it in and then kind of twist it to the side so that way it'll stay. Now what you can do is kind of come back here on the bottom and make sure you kind of secure it. And then that's that. And then to make the detail on the center, what you're going to need is a, sh a little sharp pair of scissors. Um, a pair of embroidery scissors works really, really well, but any kind of sharp little pointy scissors. And then you're just going to go in here. And it helps to hold it upside down because number one, you don't have to worry about your wire falling out because it's not dry yet. And you're just going to go around and make little snips in here. Then when you finish your first row, then you're going to come back and go into the centers. And you're just going to do that all the way. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And just keep going around and kind of offsetting your rows so they're not so lined up with each other. And you're going to come all the way around and continue to go up. And then when I get to the center, you can either leave it or what I like to do is just kind of stipple it a little bit with the end of my Dresden tool or whatever I have available. And you can kind of go and manipulate this and move these out. But then you're going to take these and you're going to let this dry overnight so it's really good and dry before you try to attach petals to it. So I'm going to stick that over there. Okay, now that we have one that's dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take our smallest, our smallest daisy and we're going to attach it onto 
our center. And again, a water brush makes this really fast because it gives just the right amount of water without saturating it because wafer paper and water are not friends. They do not like each other. So if you put too much water on your wafer, it will dissolve and turn into mush. So we don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make sure this is, it, it, it attaches pretty quickly. So this is already attached on here. And then we're going to go and we're going to do the seconds, the second layer the same way. Now obviously you can kind of play with this some more and give your petals a little bit of shape and, and movement. I'm going to put the template for these on the group page, but if you have a Cricut machine, you can always cut these out with your Cricut. Now when you put the second layer on, you're going to want to try to offset the petals a little bit. That'll just make them a little bit more visible. Now we're going to try to cup these up. And again, you can always add a little bit more water to your wafer and kind of encourage it to bend how you want it to. Sometimes it's easy to just kind of brush it and hold it down with the tip of your brush. Okay, so that's the center. And then we're just going to let this dry for just a second. And while that's drying, we're going to take our next set of petals. And to give them just a little bit of shape, I'm going to run my Dresden tool right down the center of each petal really easily. You don't need to mash it because you don't want to put a hole in it. But you're just going to push down firmly and draw the Dresden tool into the center. And this will help cup these petals a little bit and it will leave like that vein that's down the center of a of a sunflower of the petals. water brush again. And we're going to take our center. Now I attached these to each other and kind of made a cup, but you can just go ahead and directly attach it to your to your your base if you want to. You don't have to do that little step. And then it's already stuck on here. And then we're going to just repeat the same process with the other two with the other two sets of petals. And wafer paper flowers are great if you're in a crunch and you need something pretty for a cake, but you don't have time to let gum paste flowers dry. And you can manipulate these petals too if you want to kind of um, add a little bit more movement to them so they're not so static. You can go ahead and use a steamer and gently steam them and then the wafer will naturally start to curl up or it'll soften it enough that you can 
kind of help shape them a bit. Okay, so then when we put the next set, the next set on, what we're going to do is we're going to offset them again. So they'll be between the ones that we put on. And sometimes they don't, they stick before you get it all the way offset. And that's okay. Flowers are not perfect. Okay, we'll let that one do. And these are the last set, and a couple of my petals broke because this wafer has been sitting around for a while, so it's kind of started to get a little bit brittle. If you have wafer paper and it seems like it's getting brittle and it snaps really easy, you can kind of bring it back to life and make it a little bit more pliable. All you have to do is put it in a Ziploc bag and inside the Ziploc bag use another what I do is I use another Ziploc bag. I'll use like a sandwich size Ziploc bag um, put a wet paper towel into it, zip it up almost all the way across, and then I will put that Ziploc bag into a gallon size Ziploc bag that has my wafer paper. And then that way the water doesn't really have any contact with your paper, but there's enough moisture in there that'll kind of rehydrate your paper so that's how simple those are guys they're really really easy what I'll do after this after it has a chance to kind of dry for five or ten minutes you can come back in like I did with this one and um, use some dusts and kind of give it a little bit more de depth and, and dimension but you know you don't have to if you don't want to but thanks for watching